Uh, good evening, everybody, um, and welcome to tonight's webinar program. Uh, my name is David Stone. I'm the ABDI Operations Manager, and I'm joined by Gordon Stone, who is the ABDI Director, Business Mentor and Strategist, according to his title there. So, how are you going, Gordon? Yeah, I'm well, Dave. Very well. Good to hear. And for people that might be wondering, if you don't know us um, and are looking at the common surname there, I'm actually Gordon's son, um, the middle of three boys. So, um, yeah, I work in the business with Gordon and I think generally it tends to go pretty smoothly, which is something to aim for. So hopefully Gordon thinks the same. It does, it does indeed, Dave. It goes very well. And uh, actually, as the chairman of our board says, tongue in cheek, I wonder whether all the brains have been handed across to Dave. So there you go. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. But anyway, let's, um, we digress. So the uh, topic for tonight's webinar program is uh, five steps to plan your 2018 business strategy. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting topic and I guess it follows on from a topic we did last year, which is, uh, it was around developing, developing an effective business plan. So that webinar last year, which was in December last year, had over 100 registrants and it was really well received. And um, yeah, I, I guess the reason this is um, part of that overall, um, or the next in the series, if you, if you want to say that, is that the 2018 business strategy um, it's actually just a subset of, and it must be a subset of a bigger plan. Um, a year is, I guess it's a long time in some people's, um, some people's view, but in a business, a year typically goes very quickly. And that year must be in the context of a greater plan. We frequently talk about, you know, five year, 10 year plans. Um, and I know that Gordon is dealing with some families at the moment where it, they're intergenerational families and they're looking 30 years ahead. So um, the, the business plan, I guess, is something that probably should encapsulate th those overall big long-term plans right down to um, you know, the 180-day the, the plans, what's gonna happen each month as well. And, and this, this uh, 2018 business strategy really fits nicely in there. So that'll be the topic for the evening. Um, we probably should bring it back to as well, thinking about our aim, which is in the, on the top of the screen there in the, in the white. So the objective, that ABDI are looking to achieve in all of the work that we do is helping um, helping business owners throughout the agribusiness food and fibre value chain um, develop high-performing, self-managing, saleable and profitable agribusinesses. So we really bang the drum about this and, and I guess those there's quite a lot of terms there, but um, what they mean is high-performing is whatever it wants, whatever you want it to mean. It might mean a very profitable business. It might mean a business that um, helps you achieve your lifestyle goals. Um, it might mean a business that allows your the next generation to come in without causing you too much headache. Uh, self-managing is really a way that that you can actually achieve that um, because self-managing takes away a lot of the the constant need for owners and business owner and manager input um, to actually set up systems and and strategies and procedures to actually um, allow the business to run by itself. So saleable is an interesting one. Um, there's, a, there's a different view from a lot of people out there about saleable. Um, our view is you should always be setting a business up with the view that potentially one day you might sell it. Even if, even if you don't, the idea is you're actually grooming it from the beginning um, in a way that uh, it's completely set up to maximise the value both now while you're operating it and in the future when you potentially might sell it or hand it on to the next generation. And, or, you know, or even get an investor into the business to help grow and uh, profitable, I guess, speaks for itself. So I guess that's um, a bit of a blurb about the overall um, plan for ABDI and what our topic is for tonight. So before we move on and get into it, um, a little bit of housekeeping. So as always, and many people know, people in rural areas, um, internet speeds are often not the best. So we try to keep these things as low key as possible. So there'll be no videos or anything. It'll just be some, some slides, some open conversation between myself and Gordon. Uh, we always try and encourage uh, questions. So if you head over to the right hand side of your screen, you should see a little uh, go to webinar box there, which allows you to pose some questions. So we'll try and allow a bit of time at the end for questions. So please, if you've got any queries, um, either about the topic tonight or just um, business management in general, we'll um, try and address them at the end. We'll try and allow a bit of time if we can see if we can get to them. Okay, so let's get into it. So 
we probably should also just indicate that this webinar is run um, in association with the Agri or Beef Business Management Program. So we'll talk about that program a little bit later, but fundamentally it's a program that focuses on business um, as opposed to production. And it's really designed to help uh, agribusiness owners improve the management of their businesses. And that covers a whole raft of topics, such as the 12 pillars of business best practice, which we'll get into later. But it's important to note those industry partners down the bottom, which are partners in the program. There's uh, Crowhoworth, which is a mid-tier accounting and financial advisory firm. Department of Ag uh, and Forestry in Queensland, Fisheries, sorry. Uh, Ag Force and the MLA Donor Company. So those industry partners are involved because they can see how valuable improving uh, business performance is to the ag industry as a whole. And the program's open to all, ag uh, all sectors of the agri um, agricultural market, uh, including those across the value chain and people in the livestock industry. The program's currently subsidised by the partners, so something to think about. Okay. So before we get into the detail, um, we'll probably quickly run over the 12 pillars of business best practice because that provides a really good basis for everything we do at ABDI, but also for the way that um, people listening on the call right now should be thinking about um, all, all, of the, all of the broader business management in their business needs to be, all of these 12 pillars need to be considered when they're thinking how they can operate their business um, in a best practice fashion. So I might hand over to Gordon because these 12 pillars are really his baby. So Gordon, did you want to um, elaborate on these a little bit? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, and to set the scene a little bit about these 12 pillars and about our topic tonight, for those who listen or, um, regularly to these webinars, this does become somewhat repetitive. Um, at the same time, it's really critical. And when we're thinking about our business planning, it's really quite important to think about all of these elements of a business plan or a business strategy because at some point in time they all come into it. So the first one is actually being clear about the roadmap of where the business is heading. Most of us, myself and Dave include, are, are business owners and so our objective is for the business to work for us and therefore it's, it's very important for us to have our own personal goals with the business as being a vehicle for it. For, for that journey. And as Dave mentioned earlier, uh, some of these key elements are things around uh, lifestyle, lifestyle choices, um, health issues, money issues, might be transition or succession or bringing other generations into the business issue. There are people who are actually actively thinking about getting involved elsewhere in the value chain, uh, actively thinking about involving other people in their businesses. So that's where this vision comes in, real clarity and a laser focus about where things are heading to. Traditionally in the agricultural um, sector, we've been conditioned to think about saving, saving on costs, saving everywhere we possibly can. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, at the same time though, the question always is, there ultimately comes a point where the savings become limited. Our issue is um, when we're looking at that pillar number four about the finances, and that's about managing our money, the question is where does the income come from? It only ever comes from one place, which is selling a product to a customer. We are seeking the most discerning customer who is prepared to pay the most amount of money. And there will be people out there who we talk to all the time who say, mate, I'm in the commodity game. I can't, there's no way out. Well, the question always is, is there a way out? The question always is, as we examine our vision, is there an opportunity to think about that high value product? And that brings us to the third uh, one of our pillars, which is a way of thinking. Most of us, when we stop and think about it, are running, you know, a business is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. And so that's why it's really important to have the right mindset. Because in the mainstream business sector, anyone running a multi-million dollar business has a particular approach to things, sometimes lifestyle, generally speaking, somewhat laser focused about the finances. So it's that way of thinking. When it comes to point number five there, the only way for us to grow our business is to be able to involve other people in the business, which may be family members, it may be other team members, it may be contractors, but fundamentally what we are wanting to do, which is pillar number three, is elevate our thinking so we can head towards our vision, pillar number one, and the way to do that is to be able to take the time out to work on the business. That means we have to get other people to run the thing as we're taking that time out. 
the way they can best run it is systematically around managing systems. And that, for many of us, we're involved in best management practice programs, <clears throat> sometimes organic certification, biosecurity plans, all of those things are examples of systems. Our BAS, quarterly BAS, an example of a system. So it's not such a foreign concept. So the objective is to build that business systematically so other people can run it for us. When we head on to some more of those pillars, which we'll be going on to in a tick, um, pillar number seven and pillar number eight are actually thinking about our, um, our uh, corporate way of doing things around business risk and about the legals in today's marketplace. So even when it comes to managing personnel, there's no question that from time to time, um, we're exposed to legal risk. Um, so that's pillar seven, number eight. And if we manage our people well, we diminish risk. Number nine is actually thinking about that transition process that we've mentioned earlier. And that's what the planning is all about. That's why we want to plan 2018. That's why we want to think about the five year, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year, 30 year plan. So we can have money transitions in and out, people transition out. And as Dave said earlier, this discipline of setting things up for sale is actually creating a structure in which these plans can be implemented, whether or not we actually choose to do them, we actually have options. In today's marketplace, we're often looking at collectively working with other people who are like-minded. That's where we have gotta think about, well, how do we create those relationships around legal and risk issues around opportunities? Which often brings us back to sales and marketing, which is something we're often, which is often foreign to most people and to us often in the agri sector, which is an active approach to selling and marketing our product, which comes back to internal and external communication. So Dave, look, that's a really quick snapshot once again, but I'm hoping we've created the context for people to think about all of those elements of planning my business. Sure, thanks Gordon, appreciate that overview. So we might just get into it now, into the agenda. So it's a pretty simple agenda. Um, the, the first part we wanna look at is why, uh, why plan, why develop this strategy? And I think that probably a lot of people on, on the call, on the webinar tonight are, um, are across that. So that might not need a bit of a, that much focus. Um, and I guess the second part of the agenda is really going through the five steps which we've outlined um, as being important to think about when planning a strategy for the year. So I probably should say from the outset that this won't go into, you know, a lot like an in-depth analysis of all the things you should be considering when um, planning a business strategy. And the reason I say that is because um, fundamentally planning a strategy for the year is probably not rocket science. People know their businesses. They know what they need to do. Often getting an outsider um, and an external point of view is, is a good way of, um, you know, thinking about things that they didn't think about. But more than anything, um, the real challenge is actually around forcing yourself to take the time to do it. So being on this call right now is a really good um, first step for everybody. But I guess it, it leads in nicely to probably our first um, first of the five steps, which oh, actually I'm, I've, I've missed, a, <laughs> missed a bit here. Um, th this is around, th yeah, this slide here is around why is it so important to, um, to plan your strategy for the year. So Gordon, I might hand over to you for this one. Yeah, sure, thanks Dave. Um, so we always start with the question, why? And that, that comes back to the idea of a vision as well. Um, so w why would we be doing the planning? Why would we possibly even want to get other people involved in what we're doing? Well, it's really important to be clear because as the second point, tell, um, is, as the second point indicates, what we're trying to do is to engage other people um, in what we're doing. And so if we are clear on where this bus is going, um, then they're often happy to get on the bus with us. And so this, this might be personnel in the business, it might be lenders, whoever else it may be, and increasingly people like banks are actually wanting to hear the story. And so we, we want and need to be as clear as possible about where we're going and why we're going there. Uh, because that's the thing that actually directs all our activity, both emotional, physical, uh, mental, um, in fact, um, our connection with others in the family who actually want to be on the on the bus. And so this why 
um, needs to be as orderly as possible at, at a high level and then at an operational level. So Dave, I'll hand back to you. Yeah, thanks. And that last one is quite interesting. Um, it says it's often more tangible or specific than an overarching plan. Um, a lot of people are action oriented and while having you know, a 10 year plan is great, if they can't see the tangible things that need to be done over the next one month, six months, 12 months, it's difficult for some of them to get buy-in. So it's it's quite um, important to um, to actually be thinking about what this 12-month plan involves um, because that's how a lot, of, a lot of people, which we were talking about before, a lot of people get buy-in by actually seeing the tangible um, action-orientated things that they can do. Okay, so we'll move on to the second part of the webinar and this is really around the five steps um, for planning a strategy. And you can see up the, uh, the first one there, which is around committing the time. So that's what I was, where I was heading to before. It's really the most important um, part because it gets this whole thing going. So yeah, firstly, commit the time. Secondly, what's the overall vision? Um, what's the bigger context for what you're doing in the next 12 months? Uh, personal and business stock take. It's important to look uh, back before you go forward to do a bit of a stock take about what's happened. Then we'll think about you know what's actually what's actually the plan for the year. So it'll be broken down into goals, strategies, and actions, and we'll go into that in a bit of detail and why the three of them are important. And then of course the fifth part, which is making it happen, particularly around accountability. So I'll move on now to uh, step one. So committing the time. As I said before, this is often the hardest part. Um, you know what actually goes into the business strategy sometimes isn't isn't that difficult, um, but actually getting people away from the business, the right people away from the business, to actually think about uh, what the plans are for the year, is sometimes the most difficult part. And that's what we hear a lot in our programs: is people saying they enjoy coming away from um, you know time at home because they actually get to step away and think about bigger picture things. So I know Gordon, this is really a big passion of yours because you yourself have had to use this a number of times. So did you just want to go through this quickly? Yeah, there are two things, Dave. I mean, you're right. At a personal level, when planning my strategy for this business, uh, which include included de developing it, growing it, and managing it, um, what I would do, and I do do it less so, but I do it in a different setting now, is I actually book a room, because I'm based in uh, Toowoomba in Queensland, uh, book a room down at the Gold Coast, uh, because firstly, I love going to the beach. Secondly, I like like being up from uh, you know room ten and above, so I can look at the surf and the sun. But I actually lock myself away, um, and I go for a swim first thing in the morning, get a bit of exercise, uh, have some good food to eat, look at the world going by from a distance, and just commit myself to be in that room with all of my planning gear, computer, the whole shoot and match, um, and spend the time that's required. And I make sure that I do it over three days, the first day to get there, to spend half a day, uh, spend the whole day of the second day, and then half a day on the third day, which means the beauty of that is um, I've got plenty of time. I can actually sleep on it um, overnight for two nights, and I've got enough time to be able to really work through some of those worrying issues. Um, I've taken Dave away with me. I've taken my wife away with me. I've taken other business people away. Uh, that's what I do, and I know with some of our clients exactly the same thing works for them. But what we often say is, even if you can do nothing more than go into town and have a cup of coffee for half a day with your significant other or others, that's at least a damn good start. And that's what people have done, and they say, well, that's excellent. So whether you do it yourself, whether you bring other people with you or not, it's about committing that time to work on the business. Sure, and that, and that last point is quite interesting as well, getting the right people in the room because often what can happen is uh, someone will go away and think about all the things that need to change in the business and, and they'll you know, spend the time planning out what needs to happen, who, who does what when, and then they take it back to, back to home, back to the business, and then they start communicating those things and find that other people never bought into that in the first place, so they don't want a part of it, which means that all of this time and effort that was spent planning actually has gone to what, well, not to waste, but it is not being um, utilised as well as it could have. So that's an important thing to, th to think about, particularly for family businesses, um, as often there's multi-generations that need to be considered in all decision-making and planning. So we'll move on to step two, 
uh, remember the vision. So this is where we always, always start. And people will definitely, who've been on these um, webinars before know that we do bang the drum about this. And, and again, excuse us if we keep coming back to it. But as I said before, this 2018 plan needs to be in the context of something bigger. And in our, in, a, in our terminology, and a lot of people hate this terminology, but we call it the vision. So the vision is, it's whatever you want to call it. It could be just called the business direction. It could, could be called, um, it, we also have another term called end in mind. Um, it's just basically what's the end game that you're looking to achieve. It's, as we said there, it's, it's a picture of a uh, future desired state for the business. But it's also about you personally. It's what, what, where you, where you're looking to see yourself and the business in the next, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And as we said before, there's a lot of businesses we work with that have 30-year horizons because there's more generations coming in. Um, this, the, the vision, I guess, not only gives you direction and a focus, but it really can align. Um, it aligns the the year's plans to the ultimate outcome. And it also helps you, I guess, track how far you've come for that year in, when you're looking to achieve the overall vision for the business. Uh, Gordon, did you have anything to say about the vision? Yeah, a couple of things, Dave. You've made some good points. The first thing is the concept of a vision provides that sort of guiding statement. But as much as anything, it provides a guiding feeling because when the chips are down and the rot's set in, um, you can just remind yourself and the other people around you who might be feeling a little bit better of, about life, or they might be feeling worse about life, is to say, remember why we're doing this. We're doing this because we want to provide for our kids. We're doing this because we actually want to go traveling. We're doing this because in um, 10 years from now, we want a house in town where we can go and enjoy ourselves and come home to the place while the next generation is taking what we've done and building on it, or whatever else it may be. So. What that, those words that I've just created there are quite specific. That's what Dave mentioned about the end in mind, trying to be quite specific as well as conceptual. So it almost feels a bit schizophrenic working at a high level and a specific level, but this is actually about human nature. So as humans, sometimes we want something specific and something we sometimes we want something emotional that we can buy into. That's us and those around us. Mm. Dave, back to you. Sure, and, and for people attending um, on their computers, you can see a bit of a picture on the screen there. So this is something we come back to in our programs because it's quite tangible for people and it's, it's about the ladder of success. Um, and fundamentally, there's no point if you spend the time climbing a ladder if the ladder's against the wrong wall. So I guess that's just something interesting to think about, particularly if you're a visual person. And we've actually got a poll that we're going to run. So. For people that are on their computers, what will happen is a couple of questions will appear on the screen um, and just take some time to actually answer those questions. It's quite quite straightforward and it's around um, who actually has a business or a personal vision because it's quite this could be quite interesting and instructive for, for where people are at in their planning process. So it should just come up on the screen. So Dave, we, we essentially we want someone just to select one of those answers and we'll yeah. see what comes up. Just select one of those. And it's just collecting the responses now. So I'll just give it maybe 15 seconds more and then we'll check out the responses. Okay. I guess so the question is why. Yeah. I was just going to. Why, why are we doing this? The reason we're doing this is because um, it will remind you, depending on what your answer is, about the importance of the vision and whether or not, now that we've actually asked you to um, uh, to consider it, whether or not this is something that you actually do want to do. So, Dave, back to you. Thanks, Gordon. So you can see the results there, which should be coming up on the screen. So I can see that actually um, approximately 42% of people say yes to having the vision. Um, we've got 33% no and 25% say yes, but it's a bit rough around the, edge, ed, around the edges. So I think that's a really good indication that a lot of people on the call today, and that's probably why people are on the call, is that they're actually quite proactive in, in thinking about the future, thinking about wanting to plan things out. So 
Oh, I guess that was a useful exercise. So thank you for everyone for participating. And Dave, just to add something to it, um, for those people who answered no, uh, there's no right or wrong answer to any of these sorts of things. Um, we actually find in our programs that people go, thank goodness somebody has actually forced me to actually do a stock take of where I want to go and where I am right now, because it's actually some, sometimes quite energising to go, now I get a sense of clarity about where things are heading to. Mm. So back to you, Dave. Thanks. And um, we'll just head on to, I guess, uh, the third step in this planning and business strategy. So it, it's, it, as we said before, it's important when thinking about the future to actually think about what's happened in the past um, because often things have a habit of, um, you know, patterns occur and things have a habit of uh, replaying over and over. So sometimes this is, it's a really good practice to actually, you know, view what has happened in the last year um, and think about whether if, if things worked for you, how you can apply them and capitalize on them going forward. And if things didn't work, why did they not work? And, and from a business point of view, we're talking about a business stock take. So um, thinking about, you know, what's happened around finances. So potentially as part of your planning process last year, you identified that by 30th of June, you wanted to be, you know, X amount of revenue, X dollars revenue. Um, or potentially you wanted to pay down X, X dollars of debt, potentially you wanted to, you know, purchase that other property, uh, potentially you wanted to engage, you know, with, with customers, uh, certain customers. So it's thinking about whether you achieve those things and um, if you didn't achieve them, uh, why not? So, uh, Gordon, any comments? Yeah, look, a, a really quick story, Dave. Um, one of our clients uh, was looking to purchase a property we actually had a grand plan for 2017 that in the third, the fourth quarter of the year, we would actually get that property purchased. And we actually started it in um, September and uh, we had a 180 day plan, which means a plan for six months. The intention was that by mid-November it would all be sorted, the finance would be organised, uh, the property would be purchased, or, or the property purchase would be given the tick and it would all be happening. Now the reality is that there are a whole heap of things that went completely pear-shaped. And I do remember in November, there was a whole heap of angst um, about why things hadn't worked and all that sort of thing. But here we are in early, or mid, at the end of January, the property purchase is all proceeding, all the angst and fuss and bother that was, um, uh, that was uh, transpired has all now been resolved. But what were the learnings? The learnings were, that firstly, we had to get our finances in order. So now the position is that business is in a far, far better position going forward to look at its financial projections uh, for the future. So that is actually a big tick. That was an unintended consequence. The second thing is that there was a whole heap of angst between the generation generations. A lot of harsh words were spoken and they can never be taken back. But what we were trying to do at the time was actually to moderate the emotional turmoil. So what we've now learned is that we can moderate the emotional turmoil. Uh, what we've also learned is that a really big ticket item can be achieved with a whole heap of effort and there was input from a range of advisors who supported that process. So that was a really big learning which has actually set that business up for 2018 for its plan. So that is lo looking back in order to look forward. We will deal with the emotional turmoil more easily in future. We've got an orderly financial management process. We've got a very structured approach to engaging with high value customers in train now. So that's just a, a good little story of why and how this stuff works. Thanks, Gordon. And I guess we'll move on to the next slide now because um, where we're heading with this one is we've done the business stock take and what is often really important to think about and a lot of people don't think about is is undertaking that personal stock take and there's a few different ways that people could think about this um, you know a lot of people focus on like well well-being and all that sort of stuff but what an area that we really wanted to focus on was um, often what happens when people make decisions is that they're being driven by something at a deeper level so a lot of people make decisions um, and we've put it there. A lot of people make decisions out of fear. Um, and also, I guess, a lot of people often often don't have, at, at a certain point of time, depending on their personal circumstances, don't have the right mindset to be going through 
um, with a business growth process because often business growth process is quite confronting. Um, a lot of things come up and people need to have the correct sort of the, the correct mindset and the appropriate mindset to actually get the most out of this process. So we thought it was really important to be thinking about, um, you know, what's happened in the last year. Was there, if you didn't achieve what you wanted to achieve, were there some deeper underlying things going on which actually um, prohibited you from achieving those things? And when we talk about fear, I guess fear is a really important concept that a lot of people don't talk about uh, because it's, it's surprise, surprise, it's quite a scary concept that brings up a lot of things for different people. But uh, often there's, there's uh, particularly for people who are entrepreneurial and are looking to you know, push, the, push the boundaries, there's a, and for perfectionists as well, I guess, there's a degree of, um, we call it fear of failure. So people are really worried that if they put themselves out there and plan big things and tell everyone about it and they don't achieve it, then how's that going to reflect on them? Um, so f I guess fear is a very deep driver for uh, quite a lot of people and why they make decisions that they do. But that quote there, I actually always come back to this from my own point of view. So fe fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. I think it's important to just to have a go and to, and to not be scared of the outcome, which is that next part there. Instead of always thinking, what if I try and it doesn't work? Think instead, what would happen if it actually did work? And often the result when it does work far outweighs anything that might happen if it doesn't work. Uh, Gordon, anything to say on that? Um, just a little bit to add, Dave. Um, I mentioned in the context of the previous slide how our emotions tend to run us. This is what we call the law of fear is one of the things that particularly runs um, a lot of people. And as we're taking a leadership position in our business, which we're clearly doing as a result of doing this um, business planning and strategy type work, then the people around us who have a different approach to life than we do may be able to help us draw out of the law of fear if that's what's running us. Or if the law of fear is about to run them, and it's something that we as business leaders need to kind of think through and work out, well, how are we going to react? And one of the most powerful statements that I heard oh, probably 15 years ago on our report, often in our programs, is one of the guys who is a very, very successful business owner and one of my mentors said, Gordon, I've done a lot of research around high performing business owners. And this is the summary position from my, my point of view. These successful people, you six out of things six out of ten things will work and four out of ten things won't that's just the stats and so when something doesn't work the question is next so the next might be one of the six things that do work the next thing might be one of the four things that don't work and that's actually something that we often need to tell people around us and just remind them that that is I guess a, a law of probability of what will work and not work so just wanted to put that into the melting pot, Dave, from sure. a personal point of view and from a business point of view. Yeah, and, and I guess it's important to um, it's important to think that if you've got the person that's um, just having a go and six out of ten things work and four out of ten things don't, um, they will have achieved a heck of a lot more than the person that only tries one thing but wanted to be certain that it actually worked. So when you're thinking about what you want to achieve for the year, sometimes it's really important to just have a go. And, and not be held back by these things like fear, which is easy to say, but <laughs> yeah. Well, a planning process will actually help that occur because then we look at the probabilities of certain things working and not working and make that decision around that um, pillar regarding risk. Mm. Anyway, oh, that's fine, Dave, that's good. Okay. So step four of the uh, planning strategy. So this is probably what a lot of people came onto the webinar tonight for, which is the horsepower around um, how you actually plan um, plan what's going to happen for the year. So there's there's deliberately that continuum there, which is goals through to strategies through to action. And the reason that continuum exists is based on that statement below, which is goal setting is extremely powerful for business growth, but it always, always, always must be followed with a tangible action plan. So the, the notion of just developing goals that are quite, you know, potentially either unrealistic or don't actually have any structure or um, you know precision around them actually will won't get you very far um, because we'll talk about this on the next slide but 
when you're setting goals, they really need to be action orientated. Um, they really need to, to be um, able to be actually achieved and measured as to whether you achieve them or not. And so you start with goals, you actually work out what you want for the year. So start thinking about those different aspects of, you know, your business plan will go through things like um, there's, the, there's the marketing side of things, there's the financial management side of things, there's customer engagement side of things, there's the human resources or staff management side of things. And each of those areas really need to have goals assigned to each of them, things that you're looking to achieve in this case over the next 12 months. Um, but they should also be having, as I said before, those goals which are a bit a bit longer term or even a bit shorter term as well. So strategies is the next step. So strategies is how you're going to achieve um, how you're going to achieve that goal. And so it's you know again it must be a fairly defined path for you to go go down, um, and that's always informed by a much more um, deliberate goal that's being set. And the final part of the continuum there is action. So obviously after you've developed a strategy it's important to implement it and that's what we'll talk about when we get to step five it's actually how do you make sure that action actually happens and so just another good little quote there which we came across so a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan and a plan backed by action makes your dreams come true it's quite a nice little end but i mean it, in all honesty, it's a very it's very powerful, and I hope people are actually writing it down or taking a screenshot, or if they got the um, got the slides sent to them before, because it's quite a good thing to be thinking about. Um, because you know we we have big we have big big plans, we have big dreams, um, but the only way to achieve them is actually through setting these very defined goals and strategies. So I might just move on. Um, we talked about how to make those goals uh, really achievable. And I'm sure everyone on the call has heard the acronym SMART before, and we talk about it continuously on our pro in our programs because um, a SMART goal, as we've said there, is actually, it, it's very tangible. Um, there's sort of, it, it's much more black and white and it's less wishy-washy, which means it'll hold you, you'll be mu held much more accountable if you've actually got a very tangible goal to actually achieve. So that SMART acronym stands for Specific, uh, Measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And the final point there, a SMART goal will stimulate action and it actually allows an assessment of progress. Uh, Gordon, anything to add? Dave, I think you, you said most of it. Um, when, you, when you make the action SMART, or actually there's, there's a quick point, the goal strategies action type concept it, uh, shows arrows going one, one way. At the same time, they can go back the other way which is sometimes if the things that we're intending to do don't seem, ring true or don't fit in the right context, it may be that we just need to go back up up the ladder and say, well, um, is the direction we're going in the right direction? And we might need to adjust that so that the action and the, and the general direction all fit together. And that smart um, goal is, I mean, in my household, I've got somebody who actually likes to, to say to me, so what specifically are you going to do today? And also in a week or so, well, how do things go this week and are we on track? That's the conversation that, that's had in my house. So I know many families have a similar sort of conversation and that's why it's, it's very painful at times because it's just like, oh my God, I haven't actually achieved what I wanted to achieve. But sometimes there are good reasons why. And then you'll have those weeks or months where you go, if I look back and go, my God, we were on absolutely on fire. I've made up for all the things that went a bit pear-shaped. And so that's, that's human nature again, those emotional objectives. That really helps us get that sort of um, flush of enthusiasm or go, oh my God, things are not going quite right, why? And then let's get going again. Mm. So back to you, Dave. Okay, thanks. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide, which a lot of people are looking for tangible examples of these things. That's all well and good to talk about goals, strategies and actions um, at a conceptual level. But if, if people are looking to make this real and think, okay, in my planning for 2018, what does a specific goal actually look like? Um, we've sort of, we've listed a few out there. And again, uh, the, the final point there says categories of goals are completely dependent on your business and dependent on what you're looking to get out of, of the next year. But the important thing is that there should be a spread of goals across the various aspects of your business. So, 
you know, potentially financial is an area that a lot of people obviously focus on. So just that example there, it's it's you'll notice there's very specific targets that you're looking to achieve and by very specific time frames. So we're talking about financial, we're talking about um, markets and customers there. So two A-class customers by December 2018. Often, if you're thinking about your customer, um, who your different customers are, we like to break ours down into A, B, and C. Um, that segmentation's, you know, you can do it however you'd like to do it, but we have our own way of segmenting people's customers. And those A-class customers are really the ones that you're looking to foster really long-term relationships with. And they're the ones that at the end of the day, um, you know, will be much less focused on, you know, being a, being a price taker when you have relationships with, I guess, A-class customers. Uh, thinking about internal management. So we're talking there about staff roles and responsibilities, um, then specifically about a new staff engagement by a certain time. And then the CEO, that might be you as the actual business owner, um, starting to get you off the tools because that's what a lot of people are looking to achieve. So we've said here CEO engaged in BD, which is an acronym for business development, which is really about going out there and talking to customers, drumming up new business, forming relationships. So the CEO to be engaged in business development 30% of their time by August. So, um, or, or, or David might also be thinking about some other bigger picture issues. So it might be, sure. um, you know, or, or organizing machinery into much more structured approach or um, taking the time out to, um, to really think about, um, you know, what livestock or what genetics or whatever it may be, or to um, make the decision about new genetics after talking with customers. So it's all of those sorts of things, but we're trying to be as very specific as we possibly can. Mm. And that final one around growth. So that just as an example, um, because when we've been doing a lot of this business planning work, people's a huge reason people are developing business plans is to be approaching um, banks in order to actually secure lending. Um, so that's just an example of finalise you know, your business plan by a certain date to present to the bank to get X amount of dollars to purchase another property. So these are, you know, th these are very realistic within 12 months and they've got very, you know, tangible, um, tangible attributes. So with that, um, I guess we'll move on to step five, which is really around making it happen. So it's the third part, it's the action. So we've just said there, setting smart goals is the first step in this process, but how will you actually catch yourself if you either aren't on track to achieve them or you haven't achieved them. So this is a really big thing because particularly in family businesses, often accountability sometimes is, is difficult. Um, you tend to treat a family member in a much different way that you would, than you would treat a co-worker. You, you might either be too lenient on them or you might come down on them like a ton of bricks, much more than you would if it was just another co-worker. Um, so accountability is really important. And as we said there, human nature is we'd like to monitor the progress on the journey to, to see how far we're actually, see how far we've come. So the way to do this is we actually have to put checks and balances in place to ensure accountability. So the first step there is another one that we like to bang the drum about. So people that have participated before have definitely heard this, but this notion of an advisory board, and again, it doesn't matter what you call it. It could just be called um, a board or it could just be called a formal family meeting in a family business setting. But Gordon, maybe you're better place to maybe elaborate on this a little bit. Well, Dave, I really like the notion of an advisory board. I mean, we've got one in our business. And so what it does, um, so we've got a, you know, a long-term plan we've got what we call a 180 day plan, which means in the six month period leading up to June 2018, we've got a number of categories of action, which are actually um, those strategies. So I've just got a sheet of paper uh, with a series of vertical columns where those strategies are all sitting up the top and it's about customers, it's about money, it's about people like our personnel, um, it's about, um, marketing and all of those sorts of things. So it can be about any number of things. It could be about your genetics. It could be about your um, engagement with the marketplace. It could be about a property purchase. Um, so that 180 day plan fits with the five year plan. And so our advisory board has a monthly agenda. So we, we hold it 
most months, sometimes it goes out to six weeks, sometimes it goes back to three weeks, depending on what's going on. Um, but every, we, our discipline is that we actually have a common agenda. And most of the agenda items are actually parts of our business plan. And so it means every month we check in um, about how that business plan is going. And it's more about that third action step to ask ourselves how the actions are going. But the actions are related back up to the top of the column, which is the goal slash strategy. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, and that, that's assure, ensuring our accountability, and it is painful at times, um, and yet, as you look back, you go, thank God we put ourselves under such pain. The second thing is, if you actually speak the words out of your mouth to friends and family and, and co-workers, and you have to be a little bit careful who you speak what to, but if they're the right people with the right mindset, with your right emotional connection, with the right engagement um, in the vision for the business, so hence the vision for the business again, that's where then those other friends and family, rather than sort of tearing you to shreds, can say, well, actually, what, why was it that we didn't achieve that goal? Or isn't it great that we actually had a higher level of success than we expected? Why don't we go and have one of those meetings we talked about or go out and have a meal or go to the coast or whatever floats your boat? And so by that's kind of like a shared opportunity to celebrate or a shared opportunity to debrief and get renewed vigour and go again. And then the third element of this whole thing, which is often where we come in, into that mentoring and coaching um, area, is if you've got that sort of independent sounding board who can go, so tell me why it was that things didn't go according to plan. Or can you confirm and clarify how it is that these goals are actually going to work? Uh, or can you confirm and clarify how those strategies are going to function? Or tell me about that smart thing that, that's in there. So how specifically will this all work? So that's the beauty of the independent third party. And, and they can be briefed by you to go, look, I really don't want to sign up for the pain of being held accountable, but I'm prepared to do it. And so the advisory board keeps us um, clear on our direction, declaring the things, uh, reminds us that there are other people we can share these things with. The mentor and the coach can actually help act as a sounding board. So all of those are very powerful. Mm. Thanks, Gordon. So we're getting towards the end of the webinar, but please can I remind everyone if you have any questions, um, feel free to enter them into that question box and we'll um, do our best to answer them. So moving on, as we said before, this webinar is run as part of the uh, wider agribusiness management programs. So the two, two components to that one, there's a 12-week uh, agri agribusiness by design, business intens intensive program. So it's being run throughout Queensland and New South Wales in, um, over the next few months. So there's a link on the website if you wanted to go and find out more information about that. But fundamentally, that's a short, sharp business intensive program. Um, it's all about building the, getting the business fundamentals right and building the foundations of the business. Then the 12 month, and, and, oh, Gordon? Yeah, Dave, the thing to add about that particular one is that that's actually to help you do some of your own work. So you come along to a program like that and while we're, it's, it's not so much a classroom, well it is partly a classroom setting, but it's actually designed to get you to think uh, about some of those things that need to be done and get started on doing some of those things. And that's the beauty of it. You've got three months in which to get your mind really about around some of the important things. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the next the next level beyond that is the 12 month agribusiness management program. So it's taking a lot of those fundamentals and actually implementing them in your business. Um, an outcome of that one is actually developing a business plan. So it's a really good um, good opportunity to get away from the business, actually start thinking about lots of topics across those 12 pillars of business best practice and um, you know then there's 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 personal business mentoring as well so there's the ability to bounce ideas off mentors um, and also a lot of people love the social engagement because they actually get to um, connect and find out what other people in other people in the industry are thinking about and how they're operating and doing things differently uh, that one and, and David good 
A good part of that as well is that um, often we'll deviate and have what we call an open conversation about some things. So for example, last year we stopped and talked about developing um, a way of, of managing staff. So developed a little protocol. Uh, we actually did a bit of a review of how an advisory board would actually work. So some practicalities of how those things can actually be implement, implemented in your business. Mm. And that's, yeah, that one's very focused on actually implementing the changes in your business um, over the 12 month period. So, and again, that one kicks off in May in uh, Brisbane, and it's also heading to New, New South Wales as well later in the year. And another one, which, as we said before, the business planning side of things, we're running um, that farm business management skill set is uh, run by the Queensland Agricultural Training Colleges. And a big part of that is about developing a business plan um, and also a few other topics such as managing business risk and um, monitoring business performance as well. So a few, a few options there if people are looking to actually work through this sort of stuff in a bit more detail. And Dave, just to clarify that um, at QATC program, that's actually one that we deliver in collaboration with QATC. Um, and so it's um, it's a, a good foundational way of thinking about that business plan, which potentially leads into the three month intensive or the 12 month program. It's just helping people think through a logical sequence of events. Hmm. Okay, and that, that about wraps us up for tonight. Um, I haven't seen any questions come through. So if you'd like to find out more about those programs, please take the time to, to visit the website. Um, there's the URL up there on the screen. Um, or you know, we, we'd love to talk to you about this if this has brought up any uh, things you'd like to work through in your own business. So please drop us a line at info at abdi.com.au or feel free to give us a call if that's your preferred way of getting in touch. And also with those partners, partnering in the Beef Business Management Program, a lot of people feel more comfortable um, contacting those uh, representatives directly. So please feel free to contact AgForce Regional Manager in Queensland or your local Department of Agriculture. Um, and Fisheries Queensland office. Um, I'd just like to wrap it up. So thanks very much for attending um, tonight. Gordon, do you have any final final words of wisdom? Um, Dave, look, I, I would actually like to thank people for taking the time out to attend a program like this because um, I think it's very important for them to understand that, um, that this actually is time spent working on your business. Um, it is time to kind of let, sometimes let these things kind of percolate in the back of your mind before you take action. Um, and our objective with a program like this is simply to get people to kind of take, do a stock take and think what's most important to me for the year. And so if we've achieved nothing more than helping people go, well, look, there's three things I need to do during the year, um, then that's actually been a really big benefit from our point of view. Mm. Um, so we'd like to thank you all for joining us and um, I'll hand back to you, Dave, and thank you for um, for running the show tonight. No, it's been a pleasure. Um, as Gordon said, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate that often this is over dinner, so um, we appreciate people taking the time this evening to, to uh, come along. Uh, before you... Uh, once you finish the webinar tonight, there'll be a quick survey that pops up. We really appreciate it when people take the time to fill this out because... Number one, if this wasn't useful, we really want to know about it. But, but also, if it um, was useful, we'd love to know why and um, you know, what you got out of it. So please take the time to, to um, complete that survey. It'll only take, it'll take a minute of your time. But other than that, there's a final little disclaimer there. Um, so please, yeah, everyone enjoy your evening and uh, keep an eye out for our next webinar in the, next, in the webinar series. So thanks for joining us and good night.